Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you this morning, we're going to be discussing um, the 2019 Boxing Awards. Uh, True Boxing uh, Boxing Awards. I'm going to be, uh, you know, breaking down 12 different awards that I'm handing out. And, um, you know, the top, uh, top five finalists, what I'm going to do is from 122 all the way to heavyweight, I'll have a candidate for the most part in each weight class. And then I'll get, I'll break down my top five from five to one on what I thought was the best in each one. So the first award we're gonna kick it off with today um, is the award for the best performance in defeat. And what that means is basically the guy that put up the best fight, um, you know, and, uh, and but went down, you know, in the fight, he lost the fight. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily have to be based on the closest or if the guy got robbed. Uh, it, you know, a, a lot of the what factors into it is um, how, yeah, the fight had to have been close. It had to have been a good fight. Obviously, the guy had to went out and fought his ass off. Um, but, uh, you know, how big the fight was, if the guy was supposed to win, you know, or if he was supposed to lose. Um, you know, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. And, of course, performance is the biggest one. So, you know, we'll... Um, We'll get from 122 all the way to heavyweight, and then we'll do the top five. So let's break it down with the candidates now. From the 122-pound Super Bantamweight division, the candidate for best performance in defeat is TJ Dahany for his 12-round majority decision loss to Daniel Roman. Dahany was the undefeated IBF champion coming into this. It was a unification bout against WBA champion Daniel Roman. Um, yeah, and they ended up fighting to a majority majority decision win for Roman in a really good fight. Uh, again, I'll break down that fight if uh, it made it as a finalist. From the 126 pound featherweight division, the best performance in defeat is Jesus Rojas for his 12 round unanimous decision loss to Shu Can of China. Um, Rojas came in the WBA regular champion. Kang was an unheralded fighter, came out of nowhere and um, got a controversial 12 round unanimous decision over Rojas in a really good fight and uh yeah that's what happened there the best performance in defeat from the 130 pound super featherweight division is Lamont Roach Jr. for his 12 round unanimous decision loss to Jamel Herring for the WBO title I was actually at this fight and this division was really hard to um pick one because for the most part a lot of the big fights ended um, with convincing winners and Herring was a convincing winner on this fight, but Roach fought hard. He, he, uh, he hurt, uh, Herring in the late rounds. He fought hard. He didn't lose a blowout decision, but he lost convincingly, but he fought hard in this fight. So he gets, um, he's the candidate from 130 pounds. Next, the candidate from the 135 pound lightweight division for best performance in defeat. That goes to, um, Ricky Burns for his 12-round majority decision loss to uh, Lee Selby. Um, Burns, you know, was considered over the hill in this one. Went in against Selby. A lot of people thought Selby was going to cleanly outbox him. Burns put up a good fight. Ended up, and it was ended up pushing forward towards what could have been an eliminator. So, good fight, hard-fought battle by the former uh, world champion Ricky Burns. 140, the candidate for best performance in defeat goes to Regis Progre for his 12-round majority decision loss to um, Josh Taylor in their World Boxing Super Series final, as this was also a unification bout for the WBA and IBF world titles. Both fighters were undefeated coming in, um, so that's 140's best performance in defeat. Best performance in defeat for the 147-pound welterweight division. The award goes to Sean Porter for his 12-round split decision loss to Errol Spence Jr. This was a title unification bout at welterweight as well. Big fight right here. And, um, yeah, like I said, we'll discuss any of these fights in detail if they made it in as finalists. The candidate from 154 for best performance in defeat goes to uh, Dennis Hogan for his 12-round majority decision loss to Jaime Minguia for the WBO super welterweight title. Uh, yeah, so that's that's that one. Best performance in defeat at 160, middleweight. That goes to Sergey Derevinchenko's 12-round unanimous decision loss to Triple G Gennady Golovkin as they competed for the vacant IBF middleweight title. 
best performance in defeat at 168 pounds. That's super middleweight. That award goes to Avni Yildrum for his 12 round technical split decision loss, 10 round technical split decision loss to Anthony Durrell as they competed for the vacant WBC world title. This was a very controversial decision that went in favor of Durrell. Uh, a lot of people thought Abney Yildrum won. It ended up being a technical decision because a cut was opened up over Durrell's eye and that forced the fight to be stopped early. It was on a uh, elbow or a headbutt. So that's why it went to the scorecards after 10. Excuse me. The best performance in defeat in the 175 pound light heavyweight division. That goes to Badu Jack for his 12 round split decision loss to Jean Pascal for the WBA regular light heavyweight title. Um, very good fight right here. Really could have been called either way. They traded knockdowns. And um, yeah, a lot of people thought Jack won this fight. So it was very close. Good battle for the light heavyweight title. The best performance in defeat for the 200 pound cruiserweight division goes to Alexei Papin for his 12 round majority decision loss to uh, Ilunga Makabu. Uh, you probably don't know these guys, but this was a WBC title eliminator, final eliminator that would go for a world title. Uh, Papin was unknown coming in. Makabu uh, was known and uh, he ended up struggling with Papin. It was a really good fight where Makabu took a close majority decision. And then our final candidate at heavyweight for the best performance in defeat. That goes to Luis Ortiz for his seventh round knockout loss to Deontay Wilder. Um, you might say knockout loss. Why does that get on? There wasn't a lot of great performances in defeat in the heavyweight division as one. But Luis Ortiz was winning that fight when he got knocked out. And it was he put up a good performance. So that's why he gets in as a candidate. So those are the 12 candidates for the best performance in defeat. Let's start with the top five now, the five finalists. We're gonna break down the fights and see how they finished up. Um, you know, as uh, how they finished up with the, you know, and who, I'm sorry guys, I'm drawing a blank. We're gonna see who the top five was. I'm gonna break down the fights as we go. Starting off with number five for the best performance in defeat, that goes to TJ Dahany for his 12 round majority decision loss to Daniel Roman as they attempted to unify uh, super bantamweight titles at 122 pounds. Dahani was the undefeated IBF champion coming in. Daniel Roman was the reigning WBA champion and pretty much uh, everybody's pick as the number one fighter at 122. Dahani, I think he came in the underdog. A lot of people didn't expect him to put up as good of a fight as he did and neither did I. And early on it looked like Roman was going to make quick work of Dahani as he hurt him and was putting it on him. But the middle rounds, Dahani took over the fight and really put it on um, Daniel Roman. Almost stopped Roman or hurt, and hurt him and put him down. Almost did. But Roman came back in the championship rounds and took those rounds and ended up scoring a close majority decision. So that's why he ended up winning the fight. But Dahani, they were tempted to unify belts. It was pretty much to declare what the number one fighter at 122 is this is a, this is a division that's normally wide open and um you know Dahani really really he put himself on the map in terms of top tier at this division because he has coming off of a controversial decision win over Ryosuke Iwasa to capture the IBF title and I don't think a lot of people thought he was going to be able to compete against Roman for 12 rounds and he did and he he almost pulled it off so very good performance that's number five TJ Dahani for his 12 round majority decision loss to Daniel Roman. Number four is Dennis Hogan for his 12 round majority decision loss to undefeated Jaime Manguia as Hogan challenged for the WBO super welterweight title. Uh, he came in, he came in uh, really unknown, did Dennis Hogan. He wasn't well known. Manguia had pretty much been rolling over everybody. Uh, he struggled a little bit making weight. So he had a couple fights where he struggled a bit, but he was rolling over everybody at 154, knocking out most of, mostly everybody since he captured the title. And then he ran into Dennis Hogan, who ended up putting up a great fucking fight. The two went back and forth. There was a really good battle in April on DAZN. And um, there's a lot of people that thought Hogan deserved the win. It went to the scorecards. I mean, Guia got a tough majority decision win over Hogan. and uh, But Hogan really you know, put himself on the map with that win. It led to a title shot 
at middleweight against Jamal Charlo later on in the year. He ended up coming up short, but Hogan proved he's a very legitimate fighter in the in the junior middleweight, super welterweight division at 154. So very good performance against a very tough, hard hitting young uh, young fighter in Jaime Manguia. Finishing the year number three for best performance and defeat goes to Regis Progre for his 12 round majority decision loss to Josh Taylor in the World Boxing Super Series Finals at 140 pound junior welterweight. Um, this was a battle of the top two seeds in the tournament. Uh, both guys can't win in as uh, contenders. They won their first round matchups and then they captured world titles in the semifinals earlier in the year. And they were both undefeated champions going into the finals against each other. It was pretty much in Taylor's backyard of the United Kingdom. Uh, Prograde decided to go over there to fight him and ended up being a really good fight. Prograde put up a good fight. He had his moments, but Taylor just seemed to outwork him. But Prograde really went in there, fought his ass off. And when you're fighting to, to determine who the best is in the division, you know, most guys fold and most guys get knocked out. Prograde did not. He went in there, he fought his ass off, almost pulled it off, came up just short. Josh Taylor got the win. So Regis Progray finishes number three for best performance in defeat. Finishing the year number two for best performance in defeat goes to Sean Porter for his 12-round split decision loss to Errol Spence Jr. as they attempted to unify uh, welterweight titles. Uh, uh, Porter came in as the reigning WBC champion. Errol Spence was the undefeated IBF champion. Porter was coming in a big underdog, uh, a sizable underdog at least. Porter's always been the guy, he's the guy that you prove yourself against to determine if you're an elite fighter or not. And um, Spence was having his chance, and most people thought, myself included, Spence was going to whip Porter's ass, and it just didn't go that way. Porter fought his ass off in this fight and really put it on Errol Spence. Spence um, struggled, but Spence also did some good work, and it was a close, good, hard-fought battle. Spence ended up sealing a deal uh, in the late rounds when he scored a knockdown on Porter. Porter had to take a knee, but Porter fought his ass off in a fight that not a lot of people were giving him a chance in, and he almost pulled it out, really proved that he still belongs, and he's one of the top dogs. So great performance and defeat by Sean Porter. He finishes number two. And now finishing the year with the number one best performance and defeat on the year goes to Sergey Derevinchenko for his 12-round unanimous decision loss to Triple G Gennady Golovkin as, the, as he challenged for the vacant IBF middleweight title. Gary Vinchenko had lost a year prior to uh, Daniel Jacobs for the, um, for the vacant IBF middleweight title. And coming into this fight, he had become the final, he won a final eliminator in April uh, against Jack Colke. Coming into this one against Triple G, not a lot of people were giving him a chance, myself included. Triple G just is still a machine even at his age. And... Gary Vinchenko made Triple G look his age. He got hurt early and got put down, but then he just weathered that and started walking right through everything Triple G was throwing at him. Ended up being a really good, hard-fought battle, and he really was hurting Triple G, and like I said, was making Triple G for the first time in his career look his age. It was a very, very good back-and-forth battle, and it really could have went either way. There was a lot of people that thought Gary Vinchenko deserved the victory here. A lot of people thought he got robbed. And Triple G walked away the middleweight champion again, but Darry Vinchenko solidified himself on the map as a true top middleweight. He broke into the top five with that win and is really pushing himself forward with that, I mean, with that performance and is really going to push himself forward and get some opportunities, I believe, uh, because of that performance. So the best performance in defeat for 2019 goes to Sergey Darry Vinchenko for his 12-round unanimous decision loss to Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. That was a 2019 True Boxing Awards for best performance in defeat. True Boxing, you've been hit with the truth.